Hello, in this video I'd like to show you how to make your own Linux Lite CD installation of a regular Arch Linux installation from the hard drive. In this installation, I have an installation on the hard drive of 4.2 gigabytes. Um, it's very good, and not just like Arch, it's a simple, lightweight distribution. What I did is start installing from my previous video a recipe for a minimal CLI command line interface in three scripts and 10 minutes. This video helped me to go through this environment and later just add other elements for X, like XFCE. Um, the purpose of this video is when I try to accomplish the same thing, the XFCE as um, the desktop environment and the login, we want to use a simple desktop display manager in order to log in. Everything's going to be accomplished with one simple script. It's going to be located here, the Arch ISO on the Dino's repository. We have one Arch OS live image, which is an edit from the original uh, image, but just to demonstrate this is live. You can customize your own one. And for this video, I want to go get focus on the XFC, which is basically the distribution that actually assumes is going to be on the home directory for home live CD uh, is going to be using the same things that it was used on the previous install. The only difference is going to be the addition of the XORG, which is going to be the X terminal, the XFC elements for video, and the SDDM um, desktop manager. We continue with some of those things. And the password continue to be the same live, live for a live CD, and we just set up root tour but feel free to change the script and make your own one of course uh, everything else one thing that took me a good deal of time on this arch linux it was the fact that on a live cd you have to start setting the default graphical target that was a pain to figure out uh, finally after looking to those things uh, determined on that one it was able to set up and the last thing is notice that uh, the root on the arch iso is installed with a C shell. I like being bad, so you can switch back and forward just for this video. I like to keep it things simple and uh, if it works, why well, change it, right? So this is going to be the file we're going to be using, we're going to be working on. And uh, right here, we have from the previous installation, uh, four gigabytes. I'm on, I'm on the home live CD. Um, and I'm on Lime CD. There's no files right now, so we can start clean. I can do wget uh, from the file we saw. The thing they're doing is um, they're putting a bunch of things here. It's the same file. I think what I do is put 12755 on the, on the file. And I need to be number root of this record. So, here. all right, so I can execute the script, and basically what it does is goes there and checks the updates from the uh, Arch repository, and it downloads all the scripts, um, downloads its dependencies. Builds everything up, up to speed for spring breaks, like uh, squash file systems. Um, start creating the base foundation for install. And finally, we can see it actually downloads the PNG image as well. Now, that creates from this one that we didn't have nothing. We create a bunch of things here, about 30 files. The most important one right now is the one is actually the build shell script. So what we can do is actually just call it. It's going to be a little verbose. Um, just with that, it's going to start running the Arch ISO script. It's pre-configured with the previous settings. And it's going to start doing 113 packages at first, which is like 539 minutes. It's consistent to the command line interface on uh, Live CD. Uh, it's going to go ahead and do the install. Uh, it's going to continue, download the package from the main repository, checking those packages, 357 right now. 
and this includes now you can see the XFE and XOR, a good deal of packages. And now we're looking into 1.8 gig. But the intent of this video is to keep everything within 1 gig only, maybe 900 megs or so. So 8 or 900 megs. And it continues doing these dependencies, 267. There's no acceleration on this. This is a solid state drive laptop, an HP Omen. It's a gaming laptop for those uh, gamers. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good, and there's some other ones coming out. Um, but still, with that much hardware, still I can hear the the fan spinning because this is going to take pretty shortly a good amount, a serious amount of work right here. This is one of the, the three steps that actually takes most of the most of the the power when it start creating the the image. Uh, we can see that actually some warnings part of the Arch ISO build. No big deal. Uh, some of the things if you needed to get extra things as we saw on the on the file uh, you can actually customize the amount of packages that you might need to add if you need to add some things or some other programs like nginx hdub screen w get or want to know you know like a, a firefox chrome whatever extra packages you can feel free to customize and add it it's just a text file it's all, it's all it takes just kind of get it modify the text file uh, and run it and um, this is the part that actually it's creating the XE compress in its PL uh, image in the boot arch ISO image. This is actually one of the ones one of the ones I was talking about it takes most of most of the work within the arch ISO script is doing the command is working in the work directory x86 64 it's going to install within within the arch, and uh, this is the command that actually is running. Um, this is actually this one, and the, this is one of the three steps. Is the one it takes the longest time. We're about seven minutes in the video. I took, I took a lot a lot longer to explain, but it was important to see what we're trying to accomplish. Is basically a 900 megs, a 900 megs uh, live image of the arch Linux distribution. Including XFC and the SDTM desktop manager. It's pretty cool because you can actually download that 900 meg, that gig, easy plug, plug it into a USB drive, um, test it before you install it, give it a shot, use it for your internet cafe, use it for some training sessions, everything with the same user, same password, so pretty consistent. You can use it for some kiosk like informational kiosk and avenue for or telemarketing or probably some kind of um, uh, promotional so you can actually give away those gigabit um, memories maybe have HTTP directly just boot, boot the image and just eventually really pick the film when you have uh, things like that maybe um, some of those things can be really really up to you to do some testing and eventually what well, now it's only one gig can be there you just put it into your virtual machine test it if it works and you can get more serious about testing and doing more things install it there's some nice elegance or just modify and just start adding more packages customize make it your own right make your own last put image put your own packages your own look and feel your own taste uh, change the locales put in your own language uh, the keyboards and things like that bring innovation to the things you're doing. Uh, put one of those images to some kind of video, video um, imaging, you know, pulling some feeds from some websites and eventually start promoting some some kind of advertising in companies. Things like that can be plugged in directly, put into something. Um, there's a number of things that can be done with these, but that's, that's the intent of these. Demonstrate actually can be done within one gig, hey, 900 megs. It's not a bad deal to have a full XFC. If you want to use for classes, Java classes, Ruby classes, Perl classes, programming classes in general, you can actually customize your package, print your own package in a one gig, two gig memory. You can actually do a lot. Um, I got some results with the i3 window manager. Uh, those are about 800 megs, and I had some good results with, with the image for. Um, Plasma KDE, that was a little bit more, that was about 1.2 gigs. Uh, you, you need at least a 2 gig memory just to, 
just to do that and put, put it. This is the other part, the A root uh, is, is the spell system that is taking the loss. This is the parallel next squash. And again, I put some beef on that one. I put on the virtual machine four processors to speed it up, get it fixed moving. Um, this is trading it. Uh, after that, the last step, the actual building of the ISO is not as lengthy. This is actually probably the one it's taking the most. Now, now I hear the fans of the laptop really, really hammering the CPU. If I can open it, plus I'm doing video rendering, but uh, still, we're pretty good. But um, six, seven minutes on the build, it's not, not bad considering that actually it's going to be everything ready. And uh, at the end of the video, I want to have a surprise because the results of these images on the live, the live distribution, I'm making public and posting in SourceForge to, for your leisure to be able to download, to test it, test drive it, uh, so why not? Um, just one more. I'll compile it. You don't want to take the time, 10 minutes to go ahead and download it. Go ahead and do a live CD. It's, you know how it's built. You know how it will work, uh, and shouldn't be any problem to actually go ahead and use it. It's just a uh, matter of download from the site. I'm waiting until this is here. Here we go. This is the part, it's not taking a whole lot. It, it completed two percent. That was super fast. So, what I want to do is, I want to do, I want to move the output of the Arch Linux. I'm going to put it here as my Arch, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to copy. From the live CD in my arch directly to my Windows machine, and the download real quick. Be a secure copy. 19, 23, 30, 36, 24, 49 percent, 55, 61. Uh, we should be able to get there here. If I can just the settings, store it, empty, and select the right drive. So 900 megs. Actually, let's see. 923 megs to be precise. I'm gonna start it right here. And what we see, what we want to be seen here, the custom splash boot image. It was just built on the fly. Uh, we can actually start. And um, that should be able to get things moving. This is a live CD again, 930 megs only. The screen resolution looks pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than, than this. Took majority of this automatically start X by default, which is expectations. There is SDDM. I don't have any other sessions, but why not? You can actually install more and be supported. It's a live user, as we stated in the script, live as a password, live, live. And once you get in, it's going to actually start XFCE4. And if I run a live CD here, I can actually see my packages were installed. Uh, the super user door, just as, as stated right there, I can do install. Some purpose. I left it off just to demonstrate. And with that, you should be able to start connecting to the internet, synchronizing the package services. Again, this is a live CV, 930 megs. This is doing his work. Uh, everything from that compress image and everything that you can do is going to be um, on RAM and eventually you'll be able to reboot or revert the changes, go back to the original thing. That's what I was mentioned. Same conditions for training, for students, having something that you need to go back to the same configuration, keep things syncing. Even for security, you can actually do some of that. Uh, once you install the packages, you get there, returning all the packages. So I'm going to go ahead and do this thing in compression. This is the first time we're, we're, we're running it. And um, here we go. It's supposed to be a little faster, probably, than uh, my video I've been rendering and trying to compile. That little error on starting on boot, it took a lot to actually determine. But 
Here we go, screen fetch. As you see, um, it's actually doing uh, only taking about 500 megs of RAM in this in this installation. XFC4, 1.7 gigs, actually all compressed on 900 megs, almost like a, almost like in half. And um, it's pretty good. I think. Um, Does test before you drive it? You have a good set of applications here. You have some things on the system, just out of the box, and XFCE, multimedia, internet, and graphics, accessories. And if you don't want some of these, you can actually uninstall those to just come with the file XFCE. You can customize the way you want it. But what I wanted to share with you guys is like also post on the Swordforge, there are choices live. And this, this distribution that you saw is the Live XFC with SDM is right there, 923 megs available for you to download and test it. Let's drive it. I also put the plasma, which is actually 1.3 gigs. I'll make another video later for that one. And the i3 window manager. I'm really excited about this one. 822 volt, 824 megs. It's pretty sweet. Anyway, this video took a lot longer than I thought, but uh, I will have and show you later some other, other videos. Um, please um, like the video and hopefully you like the distribution, hopefully you like uh, Linux as well. Happy Memorial Day and uh, stay tuned guys, uh, stay safe, talk to you guys later.